JSRM everyone. Lovely to see so many of you um, on the call today. I think uh, it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm sure some of you would prefer to be outside in the sun, but nevertheless, uh, we've put together this little workshop to give it a bit of an introduction to Canva and creating posters. I'm sure um, most of you know who I am. My name is Amit, I'm the National Media Coordinator, and I'm just gonna run through the team in a moment, but we just wanted to give a brief introduction about what we wanted to cover today. I'm sure many of you have made posters, whether it's for your incentives or groups for the region, or you might just be interested in doing that. And things have definitely changed over the last few years because we now have access to some free software. So you no longer have to have Photoshop or InDesign or perhaps do it in Word, where there's some free software, which a lot of us use um, nationally and globally. So they use it in the media center as well in Prashanti um, called Canva. And it's a, a, quite a, a useful piece of software where, you know, lots of people can access it. You can work in collaboration with different teams, but it's also quite user friendly and easy to use. You can do it on your phone and you can do it on your laptop. And we wanted to give you a bit of an overview of how to use it and therefore hopefully give you the chance to be able to create posters and make sure that there's some kind of standardization in everything we do. And that's the main reason for our, our, our workshop today. I'm joined by some um, some fantastic members. So Sanjay is from Region 5. He's our former regional president, and he um, uses Canva. These guys all use Canva. Uh, Raghav um, is um, our, one of our main guys who creates a lot of our content that's been put up in Prashant and Iliam and used nationally. Um, Zainesh has put together a lot of these slides on Canva, and he can talk about how to use uh, Canva. And then there are a few other people like uh, Mansi and Karan and Tushar who have, have all used Canva extensively over the last couple of years and create content for the national posts, whether it's on Instagram or posters. Um, and Karan, as I'm sure you're aware of, has worked in Prashant and in the Media Center, where they've used a lot of this software as well. So the aim of today is to run through some of the do's and don'ts of, of poster design, um, and that will be done by Raghav. Um, and then we'll hand over to um, Sanjay. We'll just talk about what a, what makes a good poster and a bad poster. And then, um, you know, um, Zenish will then show you a bit about Canva, run through some of the tools that are available on there and how to use it. And hopefully, if it all works well, create a poster live so you know how to use it and how easy it is. And that's the aim, really. Following that, we're going to break out into breakout rooms, um, which will be quite small, so just two or three, uh, maybe five or six people per room. Uh, where there'll be one of these facilitators there to help you create a poster. You can stay for that if you want to, or if you can't access it on, uh, on your iPad, then as we mentioned just before we started, um, you might you can watch this back later on on YouTube. We'll be sending out the minutes and the notes out later. And therefore, hopefully you can um, practice at home in your own time. But this will be an opportunity for you to be in a breakout room and get some first-hand advice if you need to as well. So that's our aim today. One of the sisters mentioned this is on her iPad today, and so it is a bit harder to use Canva on an iPad. You can use it, but it's a bit harder to access the Google Drive to download the photos and things. And so what we have asked all of you to do beforehand is to try and get a free Canva account. So Zainesh will just show you how to do that before we go into the workshop. And also in the group chat, there's a link for where the content is to create a poster. And so that, that will then help you to create the poster when we go into our breakout rooms. So if I just hand over to Zainish now just to talk about how to create an account, uh, that comes on later in the presentation, but we want to mention now, so while Raghav is talking, you can at least create the account if you are on a laptop. So I'll hand over to you, Zainish. So as you get onto Canva, it's canva.com, um, and then you'll get a sign-in page. So you can either join using your email. Um, so here in the top right-hand corner, you have sign up or login. Um, so if you're new to Canva, you can click sign up. And then you have the option to use an email here, or you can click create using another account, um, such as Google account, Facebook, or an email. Um, I've created a new one just for this purpose. So I'll use this. So then in summary, you just have to go to canva.com and then top right to sign in or create, to create an account, yeah? Yes. And this is where you'll get. Um, but that's it's pretty simple to make an account. Um, so that's that. Sarah, everyone. Uh, thank you for all for joining. So I'll be running over some do's and don'ts on what you want to do when designing a flyer. It it applies in Canva, but it applies in any software that you're using. Um, these are basic principles that 
you know, if you use these, then you can reach your audience and, you know, hopefully you'll be able to get it across what you want, what you want to share. So if we go to the next slide, please. So Canva is an online tool, as you've seen, and it's back in the day, everyone would use Photoshop or Illustrator, and those are paid platforms, and there are loads of tools and techniques that you would need to learn, whereas Canva is a simplified, easier to use platform that's free. So it's got a free account and a paid account. And for the purposes of flyer making or sharing online, the free account is definitely enough. It's got a very user-friendly interface and it's got a lot of templates. So you wouldn't even have to come up with the design yourself. You could use one of the templates and edit it. And it's got a wide range for various occasions. Uh, people use it for different tools, different you know, um, any types of functions or a work event. So you've got a lot of options here. So the main feature is the drag and drop editor. So you can just literally, if you find an element that you like, you can click on it and just drag it across to your screen and you can move it around and make enlarge it. And you might've seen like, if you're using Word, for example, the pictures will get stuck in one place and you have to create like, you know, change the type or uh, change the layout and things like that. Here, it's a lot simpler. You can just literally just move it around. Um, you've got a lot of options like icons and fonts uh, that you can use. Uh, and you know, many of them are free and images. And especially with, in terms of copyright and things like that, the things that you use here, mainly because we're not going to be using these for a commercial purpose. We're just using it to share our, you know, our events and things like that. They're all free to use. So you wouldn't need to worry about copyright law or anything. You can just go ahead and use any of the images or, you know, texts or fonts uh, there. And you can also collaborate between different teams. So you can, um, if you've got two people working on the same flyer, same poster, you can ask them all to, uh, you know, work on it simultaneously, which is very useful because then you wouldn't have to have one person saving it on one end, emailing it to someone else and them working on it and vice versa. So that's a very useful um, feature there as well. So in terms of design, of course, the main purpose that we want with a poster or a flyer is to communicate information. Um, a well-designed flyer or poster will get the point across very quickly, very succinctly, um, so that you don't, they don't have to keep looking for the content that they want. It'll just be easy to view. And there are certain ways that, certain elements that you can incorporate that will make that your messages are communicated more effectively. First, before you start, you want to decide, decide a few things. Um, you, want to, you want to create an element of balance in your flyer. So this can be done in two ways where everything is symmetrical. Um, so, you know, all the text is aligned down the center, for example, and it's, you know, easy to spot where it's all grouped together. Uh, but sometimes you want to go for an asymmetry uh, so that everything is, you know, placed all over the place, but in a way that is still balanced. So it's still eye-catching, right? The information that you want to communicate, it needs to come across very clearly. Um, alignments, of course, you would have seen, you know, the sometimes in various elements, like even on Word, it will try to align it down the middle, especially with text, you all know, you know, left, center, right, for example. You can have the same thing with pictures, with text, uh, with um, all kinds of design elements. And Canva will make this very easy for you. You can literally drag it along and it will hint at way if you want to align it here. You can group things together and align them in one way. Uh, and Brother Zainesh will explain all of this down the line. So if you're, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you will be able to see all of this, okay? One way that we get across things clearly is 
things that are related, you will put them together. So for example, the venue and the time and the date usually are grouped together because this is the key information that you're trying to get across. So you will keep them in a similar place. You will use similar fonts um, so and similar text colors um, so that that area you will know quickly to look across and see, ah, okay, so there's the venue, there's the uh, time because these are elements that are grouped together. So the other things could be any logos. So for example, at the top, you can see the uh, organization logo. Uh, but for, if we're also having the 100 years of love logo, uh, you could have that side by side at the top. Um, and this communicates, okay, this is this has come from an official, you know, organization page, and we're using the official logos. So you know, it's from one of us, for example. Um, you will also want to repeat elements that are cohesive and consistent. So if, this is mainly in terms of, if you look at just this flyer, like the background here, you can see the pencils and the crayons and the swirls, these design elements, instead of having loads of different ones, you've got a couple that repeat over and over that tie in with the theme. So a good one, for example, is of course, um, during Christmas, you can have like snowflakes or baubles, but if, if you have like, a million stars and everything in one go, that won't look as nice and it will distract from the main message. But have a couple of things that repeat over here and there and, and that will come across. Uh, which leads on to the third thing, which is white space. Um, white space generally mainly just means the blank space. So we're sort of tempted to crowd the page uh, and thinking, oh, if I don't make it the biggest font size possible, or you know, if it's uh, not eye catching, um, then it will people will miss the message. But a lack of space actually is very effective at communicating the bits that we we do want to highlight. So, if you know we have you know a venue or the title, and we have loads of pictures or of Swami around it and design elements, then it might distract. Whereas if you keep it clean and just there at the front, then it will obviously direct your eyes towards it. Uh, and it will get the message across. So don't be afraid to leave spaces empty. This is a bit more complicated, but some of the basic elements I think we can all get across. So color theory in the end just boils down to don't make it complicated in terms of loads of different colors or have a background where it's you know a white background and have a very light like yellow color. Keep things that are complementary and that are contrasting as well. So anything that you, sh that you put on page should stand out. That's effectively what we're trying to get across. So you have your primary colors and your secondary colors, and you've got color wheels that if you are inclined to investigate further, you can. So if, Brother Zanish, if you can just go to the next page. Um, so you've got some tips and tricks that you can use, contrasting colors, uh, ensuring that things are easily readable. Use neutral backgrounds. So if you have like a rainbow colored background that changes as it goes across, it's gonna be very hard to put text across because that text will have to keep changing and it'll be very hard to read. And if you have a picture or something in the background, then also it's very hard to read because the picture will have multiple colors naturally. So keep the background very neutral, maybe, that doesn't mean keep it white or black. You can have a little bit of element here and there, but it shouldn't be the thing that distracts. You should be able to see the text quickly and clearly. Um, try and limit the number of colors. Um, if you have a couple of colors for the text, that in itself will be very effective um, because you don't want the eye to be drawn everywhere. You want to be drawn to certain portions. So the red section here or the blue section here, and then that's it. Right. As you can see, you can, there are, you can look into this more, but you have different uh, impacts for different colors. A blue for calm, red for urgency, you have green for, you know, the environment, uh, things like that. So we might use green if we're promoting, of course, the tree planting uh, because, you know, it ties in with the theme. Uh, but this, you can look into it further, but it's not as important at this level as long as it's legible, that's what we wanna go for, okay? 
um, as um, so we've got the color theory here. You can see the contrasting colors. Um, so you can see which color the lines in between. So red would go well against a yellow, for example, and things like that. So you you can explore this further in detail, but at the end of the day, put a color on there, put another color on top and see if you can read the text very effectively. Um, if you want to explore this more in detail, we'll, we'll be sending out these of course. So if this goes into the... If it's all kind of... Sorry, I think someone's on... Um, I'm great, thank you. Um, we'll be sending out the slide, so you can click on this link and this will take you to this article by Adobe. Adobe will also has a color wheel that you can play around with and you can use the different colors and things like that. Um, just, just if you're interested, of course, explore it and it'll, it is it is a fun thing if you, if you like. We'll go on to fonts next. So you would have heard the terms serif and sans serif, but effectively what it comes to is a serif font has these like little bits at the end. So you can see the T in traditional there, that little flick right at the end of the T uh, or, you know, the R, like, you know, the end bits at the end, that's what a serif font is, right? Um, and a sans serif is literally without those flicks. So you can see the word like modern has literally no, none of those flicks on any of the letters. Traditionally, what we use is we use both um, but we use them so that one is prominent uh, as a title. So we normally use a serif font as a title, and then we put the main text in sans serif so it's easy to read. So a serif font can be decorative um, and, you know, um, eye-catching, uh, but the sans serif one will, will, will use for the boring stuff like venue and time and things like that. Uh, both are important. And... You've, um, there are, of course, subsections of these, which are like the script fonts, which is the handwriting fonts or the brush fonts. Um, and you've got the decorative stylized fonts. Um, you want to know what kind of look you're going for. So if you're going to be doing like Swami's birthday flyer or something, you're not going to be using a Comic Sans font. In fact, avoid Comic Sans. Everyone hates Comic Sans, so don't use it. That's the tip. OK, but you're not going to be going for the fun jokey one there. But then again, if you're having like a budget and jam session with, with the youth, then you would go for that. So know your audience. Uh, but in general, you can't go wrong with going for a traditional font. Like Times New Roman is very traditional, right? Um, and aerial. Uh, but just go for things that work in contrast. So go for one. Uh, in max, max go for three fonts, but ideally stick to two. So use one for the title, which can be a fancy one or, you know, something as eye-catching, but also not too distracting. So if you've got cursive headache-inducing fonts, don't go for that, but go for one that's bold and, you know, you've got the title clearly. And then you can use the sans serif font just to highlight the venue, the, the other details. And instead of using different fonts there, use different weights. So you can use a bold for one section and a regular for another section. And that works very well. And you can change up the size a little bit there. But again, like going back, group the elements that are together and keep them all similarly. So venue, time and date, keep them all maybe like a regular together in one section. You can have like a description one saying, this event has, you know, such and such speaker or things like that at a different height. You can have that in bold, maybe. And then at the top, you've got the title, of course. Um, yeah, that, that effectively will help you communicate it well. Yes, so ensure at the end of the day, it's readable, it's legible, right? Uh, it might look very nice going for the cursive fancy uh, regal font, but if no one can distinguish the I and the C or the R, it's not going to look nice. So if, if, you're, if you're wondering, mm, am I, is this correct? Just pass, send it on to someone and I have them have a look, of course. Um, always get someone to quickly uh, look over your work in case you've made any mistakes that you might not have noticed. Uh, but this is a good um, 
that you don't go for the over cursive fonts. In terms of media, of course, you know, on most of our, you know, most of our flyers will have a picture of Swami. You can find a lot of high quality images online. But just make sure that, you know, they are visible. You don't want a blurred picture of Swami. And what you have to remember is you have to work out where this is going to be used. So if this is going to be primarily shared on the phone, for example, you can get away with a reasonable quality. But if you're going to be printing, you know, a flyer or you, maybe if you're going to be putting it in a banner, maybe uh, you're going to have to go for a high quality picture and you have to be wary because of course a lot of pictures of Swami uh, were taken you know black and white or back in the day so they might not all be uh, good quality so just if, if if you're in doubt just print out the picture or print it out once you've done the flyer and you can see that it looks blurry or not then or you can just zoom in on your phone as well um, icons of are you know you can sometimes use them for mainly venue and date and time don't go for over quirky ones you all know the venue one which is just really like the like almost like the heart shape pointing down to the bottom uh or you know the date and time will just be a calendar icon and a clock just use simple icons that everyone will get immediately don't go over fancy and if you are using uh, two different, like, you know, a date icon and a venue icon, try and get it from the same type of pack because if one looks very different from the other, that will also not look nice. It will be distracting. They are not necessary, though. Uh, you can get away without using them, but if you'd like to, then try and make them similar. Um, videos, of course, this, is not, this doesn't mainly apply to flyers, but you you might be able to, you might want to send out a reel or a um on instagram or whatsapp again make sure that they are high quality and you can you can hear the voices so if you're shooting out in the field or something it might be very atmospheric but if you can't hear what they're saying it, it's not very good so try and try and keep all of this in mind um if you're going to be doing multiple things if you're going to be sending a flyer and then you're going to be printing a banner Try and keep these, you know, don't decide, like use one design format for a flyer and then completely change it up for the banner. Try and reuse elements across the different things because that keeps the overall theme consistent. It, it saves you a lot of work as well, but it looks nice when things are coordinated, right? So if, you know, one, like this flyer, for example, that we sent out for this, um, for this workshop, we're using the same background and same kind of, you know, um, fonts and text for this slideshow. That's not us being lazy. It's us coordinating between the two elements. And that way you, you think ahead and it all ties in together. And that alone makes it look more professional and it looks consistent. In terms of branding, the main brand that we will use is, of course, the Satisai organization logo. We use two versions. One is where the name is underneath uh, the main logo. Or the other one is where it's by the side. Um, if you're going to be using it, make sure that it's clearly displayed. Normally at the top, uh, top middle or top left is where we usually put it. Uh, don't have it so that it's cut off to the side or something so you can't see half the words. Um, and make sure that you can see the text. So if you have like a, the black version of the text, then put it against like a gray background or something. You will not be able to read it. Uh, it. The same thing, you know, that applies with other text should apply to the logo as well. Make sure that it's clear and, you know, indicates where it's come from. In terms of dimensions and sizing of the document, this is something that you need to start beforehand but first you need to decide where am i going to be sharing this is this going to be whatsapp is this going to be instagram or is this going to be printed and canva has the templates that you can use already so the instagram square portrait uh post is the one that we always always use in the organization these days so this is what we recommend everyone as well so the square poster uh, 
you can just use as a template that you can share straight onto the Instagram and you can share it on WhatsApp. It will communicate the information clearly. Gone are the days where we used to have a flyer that fills the whole phone screen because that looked nice, but it isn't consistent because what you have to imagine is people will not have the same phone that you have, of course. But even within two iPhones, for example, one might have a different screen size or, you know, might have an older version. So, um, and that's not even getting into a, one person who has an Android phone, so a Pixel or a Samsung phone. So the best way is to just use a common square technique that Instagram uses and that you can fit in all the information there. It, it gives you the limitations as well. So you know what the other person is say, uh, seeing. Um, I mean, one way that if you do, if you use like a full screen um, poster and you, you know, that fits the entire bit of your phone. So I'm holding up my phone, right? If, if for example, I put in an element right at the top and put, and I put in like, you know, the logo or the, um, the, uh, the heading, it might all look very nice on the fly you're creating, but then when you send it out, that's going to be hidden by someone's notch on their phone or their island or something. So the main bit might be lost. Whereas if you use these templates, then it wouldn't be. So I think just go for these. It just makes your life easier. Again, yeah, the benefits are you've got a consistent look that's um, already there. You don't have to you don't have to drag and like drop the or change the dimensions yourself. It's just there already for you to use. So just customize it. But yeah, it's just there. Yeah, so I think. Yes, just use the templates that are provided. It makes life easier. But go for the Instagram square template for flyers. Now I'll pass this on to Brother Sanjay and he'll go over the next few, next few slides. Thank you. Saira. So um, we just wanted to look at uh, what makes a good poster and uh, a bad poster. And um, yeah. This is an example here, and uh, we just wanted to gather your thoughts. Is there, is there anything, uh, is this a good poster or, or not so good poster? And uh, why or why not? And you could um, either just put your comments in the chat, or if you can see anything that's right with this or not so good with it, just, um, just yeah, let's have a look into it based on what Raghav has gone through so far. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff coming through. The font color is too light for the background. It's not a good poster because you can't read a lot of the text. Yeah, I think there's six or seven things that are wrong with it, aren't they, Sanjay? Yep. The logo's cut off. Um, wrong text is being emphasized. Yeah, colors. Font sizing spacing. The logo is cut off. Can't read the white font. The weight of the fonts. Yep, someone's asked where is the program? There's no um, venue on there. There are more than three fonts as well. Yep. Contact details. Is the yeah, Somi's photos covered by the text? Is the spelling okay on everything? Central font size is too big. So there's a couple of other ones. Yeah, the, um, here we go. The actual uh, background color. Yeah, not very inviting. Yeah, at least Comic Sans isn't being used, very true. Yeah, the grammar's not great. The there's a um obviously the the background color isn't great. The organization is spelt uh wrong. Um yeah, the logo's been the logo's cut off, which I've mentioned. There's no venue on there. There's writing on Swami's face, too many fonts. And again, you're drawn, like Raghav was saying, you're drawn to the largest font. And here the largest font doesn't actually have the most important information. So you're kind of thinking, well, what is it? Um, and the actual important information here is the smallest font, which is kind of the, the, the wrong way around. 
and also the the poster dimensions as well. It's not the square poster, so it's not it's not going to work very well on on WhatsApp. So you can see that's yeah, that's not a not a, a great poster. If we move to the uh, next slide, and this is an example of a good poster. You can see here you know, all the things that were wrong with the other one. The logo is central, it's nice and square. The main thing about the workshop is right in the middle. You've got the, the logo for Canva. You've got a, a QR code as well um, and, and a link to register and telling you what it's about as well. And it's not too not too busy. There's lots of white white space around it. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sanjay. It's really helpful. Uh, so we're just going to hand over to Zainesh now um, to talk a bit about Canva. One thing before he starts is uh, just to be aware of is that none of us on here are experts. None of us are professional um, graphic designers. We're all still learning. But I think it's clear to see, you, you'll see that, you know, with a bit of um, effort and a bit of uh, kind of basic knowledge, anyone can create these good posters. And I think we're proof of that. So I hand over to Zainesh to continue a bit more about Canva. Uh, sorry, my everyone. So obviously, once you've made your design, you're going to need to export it. Um, so obviously, downloading it from your computer or from your phone uh, to post onto social media or a WhatsApp channel. Um, so there are a few version, um, few export settings that you can use, such as PNG, JPEG, and PDF. Uh, most common will be PNG and JPEG, as these are pictures. Um, PNG is more used for high quality images and graphics. Um, so if you have a lot of uh, elements and uh, images that are high quality, then this would be better. For JPEG, it's more common to use for websites or sharing on WhatsApp as it's slightly smaller file sizes, so it's easier to share and send. And then you have PDF, which um, you can use for your posters um, and sharing documents for printing as well. Um, however, with Canvas Free version, um, Exports are reduced to a standard size, um, but this isn't a problem because it's this is a general standard for using on social media and printing and web use. So we'll just quickly go through the free account and the paid account. Um, so today we'll after this after these slides, sorry, we'll go through a free account. Um, so the basic features of free account are you get thousand templates, design elements, and free photos. Um, However, not all photos are free because they will be linked to the pro version, uh, the free um, paid version. Um, these are stock images, stock videos, that kind of thing. Also music as well. Um, file export, as mentioned in the previous slide. Um, a brand kit. So brand kit consists of a logo, fonts, uh, colors, I think that's it. Um, and storage as well, which you get on your free account. So you get a certain amount of storage to save your designs um, which you can then share and collaborate with your team members um, for live uh, editing. So if you have one person on uh, a design, you can have someone else trying to edit at the same time, which allows for collaboration, um, which is quite cool. Um, and then for a paid account, um, so you get all the features of the free account, but then you get more features such as more templates, more stock images and elements and videos. Um, and with that as well, you get higher export settings such as 1080p, 4K for videos, for example. Um, and also you're able to scale up your designs. So let's say you made a design which is for a, uh, like a small business card, for example. If you then want to scale that up to a, a banner, uh, a paid account allows you to do that. Um, and a limited storage and collaboration as well. Um, so you can share products, create folders, um, create designs and also allows you to develop on your brand kit as well. Um, moving on. So just a summary of everything that Raghav and Sanjay went through. So the do's of design. Um, so in summary, you want to keep the design simple. So using a clear and concise message. Um, so less is more when it comes to design because you'd rather have less information on the design, but the right information, such as venue time and date and the uh, event. Uh, name, for example, rather than the whole message saying, join us now for blah, 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 blah. Because obviously you'll get too much on the poster, which you can leave for your 
cut it. Um, high quality images, you'd want to use the best images you can because obviously a blurry image isn't going to be as eye-catching or appealing to a, uh, a viewer. Um, make sure you keep a clear focal point. So obviously the event name should be the biggest thing. Um, and then sub text under that, which will be your venue location and time. And then a clear color scheme. Um, so you don't want like purple or neon green, for example, that wouldn't really go. So try and keep the colors simple um, and make sure it aligns with your theme. Um, and as Sanjay mentioned in the good poster, you, there was a, a hierarchy of importance. So obviously the event name, the date and time, and then the information to register for it. Um, so you, obviously you read from top to the bottom um, and that's the order you want your uh, information. So it's easier for your viewers or the devotees to read and obviously for readability. And then contact information. So each poster or design should have some sort of contact information. It doesn't necessarily have to be a phone number or, or an email address, it can be a website. Um, but as long as they have some way of getting in contact, then that's uh, that's needed. So now the don'ts of design. So the things you don't want to do is overclutter a design. So you don't want too many things, too many images, too much text. Um, as mentioned, you don't want too many fonts as well. So two to three fonts is normally standard. Um, and then the quality images is a no, no. Um, and moving on to the next slide. So we have spacing. So you don't want to copy a whole design where you then have no white space. Um, cause then it'll be hard to read and it won't be as inviting to look at. Um, and then bright colors, you don't want content to stand out too much more than other content. Um, cause then it just, it just won't be easy to read. And then also proofreading, uh, you always want to check the places that they have the right spellings, right grammar, um, also such as things like. American spellings and English spellings, normally American has uh, Zs in letters and words, for example, whereas we use Ss. For example, uh, in the back poster, there was organization with a Z instead of an S, so little things like that. Um, but they are the don'ts of design. So now this is the fun bit, uh, where we get to show you how to use Canva. Uh, so this is what everyone's come here for, hopefully. Um, but now I will take you through how to make a simple poster. Once you first log into Canva, you have all these templates here which you can use. Um, if you click on one, for example, let's say Instagram post, if you click on the search button, you're able to browse all the templates that Canva okay. provides for you. Now, these can be edited to your liking. Um, this is just an Instagram template, for example. Uh, but if you go on to a presentation, for example, like what we've made today, this was made on a presentation. Um, gives you loads of designs, which you can then uh, change to your needs. So if we go back to make a poster, click on Instagram post, we then get a blank template here, or we can use a new one. Um, for this demonstration, I'll be using a blank one to show you everything in the design side of things. So if you do decide to create a blank template, you can get templates on the left-hand side here where you have design element, text, band, and so on. Um, so if you do decide you want to use a template, then you can click here. Now you can see on some of these designs here, they have a crown, which means it's a, a feature of a paid uh, Canva. So if I was to use this, I would probably have to pay for the image because it might be part of the pro version uh, or the font example. Um, and any that don't have any crowns means it's free to use. Um, so majority of the stuff is, um, but you'd have to check um, before using. So, and then if we go on to elements, this is where you have all your shapes, your graphics, uh, stickers and stuff like that, and backgrounds. 
So you just click into shapes. Obviously, you have all your shapes there, which you can then customize um, depending on color. Make it blue, for example. Um, that's where you do that. Um, also, in elements, you have uh, graphics. So this is where you can find your icons, as Raghav mentioned in one of the slides. So let's say you have a icon for a website. You can then click on that and then add the website link next to it. So www.sadiasai.org.uk. Um, and then also you have frames. So these are um, place or like placeholders where you can add images. So this is a website, for example, which you can then add an image of your website inside there. Um, so any of the elements that you see that has a background like this with like a green field, a cloud, that means you can add a picture. Um, there are quite a few if you scroll further down. So here we have frames that are just basic shapes. So if I just wanted to add a, I don't know what shape that is, but if I just wanted to add that, I could just add a picture inside there, um, which I'll show you in a little bit once I've uploaded an image. Um, you have all these which can be used. And then you can also do mock-ups, which allow you to add an image or a design to a uh, image. For example, this person holding a phone. You could then add your center website on there, for example. That's just elements. And then text. This is where you'll find all your fonts. So if I add a font there, I can then click here where it says font and then search for the different fonts. Obviously here as well, you'll see some that have that are a part of the paid version. Um, it will tell you on the side of them here, as you can see, they've been marked. That means you'd have to pay for them. Um, so if you could, if you stick to the ones that don't have the little icon, that'll be, that'll be free. And then obviously you can obviously change your sizing, um, make it a bold or that kind of stuff. There are some uh, font combinations that you can use. So if I just get rid of this, you can use font combinations and some of the templates that they use. Um, so then you can edit that and make it how you like. And also once you, if you made a free account, you do get little prompts. So I'll just close that one that just came up, but you do get little prompts on Canva about how to use it, which is quite useful. Uh, you do get a tour like a guided tour through the software, which also helps. Um, but that's your fonts. So you can, there's quite a wide range there. You go back. Um, brand is part of the page um, version. So we won't go through that in too much detail, but if you do get a paid version, then you can add the logos, brand colors, and your fonts there. Um, and then also photos such as um, pictures of Swami or your center, for example, you can have that there. Our next question would be, how do I add pictures to Canva? Now you can obviously use uh, the stock pictures they get. So if I type in uh, castle um, and then click on photos, I get pictures of castles. However, not all of them are free. Some of them might not be what I like. Um, however, most of them are pretty good. Um, you just have to scroll a bit to find them. Uh, but let's say we want to add an image to Canva. You click on Upload here on the left-hand side, and it's the fifth icon. And I click on the purple button, um, and then that brings up your file manager, where you then have your images. So I'm pretty sure, or I hope, most people would know how to download an image from Google, for example. So in the folder that we've sent, we've added a few pictures of Swami. So this is how you would add them. So then obviously they would come up here. You then add the pictures of Swami. And then they would appear here. So if I just quickly do that. Uh, so I've just added a picture of Swami. And you can see here it's uploading. So that's a very simple process. You download your picture that you want. You then upload it and it's there. Um, 
So as part of the interactive session, we've challenged you guys to make a poster for Swami's 99th birthday, I believe. Um, so the information that was included was this here. So everyone should be able to access. I don't know if you can see this. Did you guys see the word? The word dot? No, we can't. We can only see the Swami's photo. We can on the screen. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, one sec. Yeah, so everyone should be able to access this, which has the brief, um, the link for the photos, and then the details included in the poster. So if I just quickly copy this. Add this to Canva. So these are the details that I want to include in the uh, design. So obviously it's a birthday celebration, so we want to make it birthday themed. Um, so if I, if I want to use this picture of Swami, for example, I can, I can set this as a background. Um, so there are features if you right click you can then set um, a picture as a background or detach it from background, um, apply colors to the page, for example. So it takes a certain color from the photo from the photo, and adds it to the background. Um, if you have text on the page as well, for example, it then adds it to the text. So if I do that again, you'll see that uh, color has been taken from the photo. Um, but if I make the poster now using these details, um, so it's a birthday theme, so we want to make it fancy. Um, so you probably use nice font. Um, you can also search in here for um, fancy, and it will come up with like elegant wedding decorative suggestions for you. So if I keep it simple. I didn't know you could do that. Search for the type of funds and that's really useful. Yeah. Um, if I type in one name, uh, give me a suggestion on that. Uh, so you could put formal. Then you get formal. Obviously, there's not many options, but yeah. But yeah, if you type in a certain style that you're looking for, then it will populate it for you. So if we go for this font for now, um, a good thing about Canva is that if you move things around, you can see this purple box up appears and it shows you that things are aligned, which was one of the things that was mentioned in the slides. You want to make sure things are centralized or aligned to the left, aligned to the right. Um, Cause you don't want a design where it's like, text is like that and just not aligned to anything. Um, I keep that like that. Um, and then add the picture of Swami that we had earlier. This is going to be a very basic poster because um, I'll leave you guys to actually have a go and try it for yourself. Because um, that's where the fun part is. So you guys actually learn something from the workshop. Uh, but then if we add the contact details. So Zainish, where are you flipping from to two different pages, just so people understand that? <laughs> oh, so at the bottom here, you can add as many pages as you want. You can have 50 million pages, probably. Um, but you can add, let's say you have a design here, um, but you're not too keen on the colors. You could then duplicate it and then apply different colors here or rearrange the design, for example. Um, so it allows you to have more than one design of the same thing because um, you might not be a fan of a specific design. Um, and then... And you can work on a few at the same time, and then just download the one that you want, export the one you wanted to, the single yes. page. So if, let's say, this is the final design, which is not, but we'll pretend it is. Uh, we'll put in the middle. I'll put this in the middle. In the top right-hand corner here, uh, you can see the button share. 
um, you click share. This is where you download and export your uh, designs. So at the bottom here in the bottom four parts, you have download. Uh, if I could just quickly go through this bit here, you can share your design with people. I can share it with myself, not that one too, but I know someone else on the team, like on there or Raga, for example. Um, and you can collaborate and anyone with the link can access it. Um, and then if we go to download, this is where you'll export your design. So we want to download page one because that's the best design. So I click which page I want, page one. And as you can see here, it, um, as mentioned in the last slide, um, the paid versions allow you to do more things, such as transparent backgrounds, lower quality designs, um, and the size of your design. Um, and then he, these are the options here. So we want to post it to Instagram, for example. Um, it's a very simple design, so we'll probably just use a JPEG and then click download. As simple as that. Um, obviously, you want to choose the you want to do it in a PDF, um, not PDF, yeah, sorry, PDF. Um, we can get it sent to the printers and they can print it and it's as simple as that. So you just have to choose your um, format and then just click download. Obviously, if you didn't want more features in there's a paid account. Um, so then there's just a question coming about um, adding a background. Uh, so can we do like a background watermark picture and then add the text on top? But can you just show us how you do that with the layers as well? That's quite um, useful to know. Yeah. So if I click on elements on the side here, um, let's say we want to add a cloud background. Type in cloud. I click on photos in the uh, menu at the top. And then, for example, I want this picture. I can then right click on that. And then at the bottom, set image as background. And then boom, that's your background. Now, if you then want to move the design, because uh, if I replace that with this one, for example, I don't want the sun in the picture. If I double click on that, I can then choose which side of the picture I want. So if that, if I choose that, it will remove the sun from the image. If I then double click again, I can then crop it so it's in the image. Um, hopefully that answers your question. That's really useful, yeah. thank you. And then just one more thing on the left-hand side, you can have projects. So let's say you're making designs for Guru Purnima or Swami's birthday. You can create a folder and then call it Guru Purnima. Um, and yeah. then you can share that design with uh, that folder with people and they can collaborate and then create stories, Instagram posts, WhatsApp posts. And, uh, so in theory, yes, you could have that Guru Purnima folder and then people could collaborate with that is that right yes how do you share that that folder with people so they can actually come into that um so i call it group one i can then add the emails of people that want to be right part perfect of or if you just want to share a design you can as i showed you guys earlier you can click share and then add people there or copy the link for it um, then paste it yeah great so Zainesh has shared the link. He sent uh, sent it to my email and I have Canva open here. So I was just able to click on it. And it, as you can see on the um, top, uh, top right, it's now got my picture there. So I can also edit. So two people can do. So this is Zainesh's screen that you're looking at now. But for example, I'm the one moving it, as you can see here. And it can tell you who's moving it. It's like a Google Doc, but for design. So uh, it's uh, that's what live um, changes are reflected as it, as it happens. So that's the advantage of having multiple people collaborate at the same time.